Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing a get ready with me and today, the day that this video goes live, is my three year YouTube anniversary. So I figured it would only make sense if I filmed a chatty get ready with me, kind of talking about my time on YouTube and what I have learned. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So I did already prime my skin before starting this video just so it would have time to soak in but I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Born This Way in vanilla. So it's weird because I feel like I've been on YouTube for longer, but also not quite that long. <laughs> so I don't know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, I feel like I've been on YouTube forever. And then there's another part of me that feels like I just got started on YouTube. And I think maybe part of that is because I feel like my channel has really evolved and it took me a while to kind of understand what type of content I wanted to post and just what I wanted my channel to be. And I feel like I haven't been in this place for that long where I've really been happy with my content and I feel like I'm really starting to kind of brand my channel and myself. I'm gonna add a little bit more to my chin just cause I'm breaking out and need a little more coverage there. But when I started my channel, okay, so let me back up actually. I had been wanting to start my channel for a very, very long time. About probably a decade, honestly, before I actually got the courage to start it. I would sit there and I would just kind of talk to my mirror while I was doing my makeup as if I was filming a makeup tutorial. Or I would be in the car and just like picturing myself filming a video or like speaking to my steering wheel as if it was a video. You know, I started watching YouTube probably when I was in high school, actually probably middle school. And I watched, I was just obsessed with watching YouTube videos, especially like makeup videos. This was when like Michelle Fawn was really big on YouTube and I was learning so much from her. Some of my other favorites were like, I like Whaley or J Loves Mac or Miss Glamorazzi, who's now Ingrid. And you know, YouTube is something I always pictured myself doing, but I always put off thinking like, you know, when I get a camera or when I get blank, I'll start a YouTube channel. And I kind of got to a point one day where I realized that if I just kept having that mindset, that if I wait for blank, it would never happen. And I wanted to share that because if anyone's watching this, it doesn't have to be a YouTube channel. Whatever you're doing in your life, if you're waiting for the right time and you're waiting for everything to kind of fall together or fall into place before you start, you're never going to start. So just what I ended up doing was just going out and buying a camera. I told myself, you know what? I know this is what I wanna do. And if I go out and buy a camera, I'm not going to have an excuse. So I found someone selling a used Canon Rebel T3i, which is actually what I was filming on up until last fall when I bought the camera I have now. It's funny for me to think back because at the time I didn't know anything about cameras really. And if I knew a little bit more, I would have researched it more, but I guess I, ha I mean, don't get me wrong, I did research it, but I bought it for pretty cheap. I Not pretty cheap, I bought it for about $250, which for a DSLR is a pretty good price. But I think I just assumed, cause okay, I watched like a bunch of videos of people's like quality on a Canon Rebel T3i and I was like, oh, this is pretty good quality. But what I didn't realize was not every single camera comes with autofocus in filming. So I remember getting that camera and being so excited. I brought it over to my parents' house and I was like, look, I bought this camera. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. And I was like trying to set it up with my dad. And I remember like setting the camera there and what I pictured was like, you know how beauty YouTubers will like hold something up to the camera and then it will refocus. I was like, look at this. And I remember holding something up to the camera and putting it up to it and then being so confused why it wouldn't focus. And I was like, hmm, I'm just gonna have to read the settings on this. And I remember going for days trying to figure out why can't I get this to autofocus to come to realize that the Canon Rebel T3i doesn't have autofocus while filming. It only has autofocus in photos. So that was like the biggest challenge for me when I was first starting my channel is that I'm filming alone. I don't know anything about cameras or anything to set up. And I would have to set my camera and try and get it to focus without actually being in the photo. But when I first started my channel, I was at my last semester in college and I lived in a house with four other girls. And I 
remember just like not feeling comfortable enough to film in front of them because if you've ever started a channel or you've ever recorded yourself doing anything you know like talking on camera is something you have to get used to it does not come naturally it's such a bizarre concept so to do it in front of other people when you're first starting your channel is very intimidating so i would go home drive home to my parents house from college every two weeks and i would sit at their house and i would film four videos so i would have enough content to post two videos a week while i was gone and then i would go home and i would film four more videos <laughs> And honestly, watching back my older content, I know that all YouTubers say this, but really, it's just, it's such a cringe fest to go and watch it because I feel like I really have evolved a lot since then. Not only my like actual filming, but also just who I am and my personality. And at that time, I also wasn't comfortable on camera. So hearing me speak, like you can hear how uncomfortable I was, but it's definitely been a journey. It's been so much better than I thought it would be and also so much harder than I thought it would be. I still remember uploading my first ever video and having just this very unrealistic expectation of like, oh, I'm gonna post this and then it's gonna go viral. And I don't know if I was the only one who just assumed that like starting a YouTube channel and growth would be somewhat easy. Like if you guys have a channel, let me know if you started it and you were like, this is gonna be tough or you started it and you're like, oh, it's not that hard because that was kind of my mindset. I was like, okay, so I'm just gonna post this video. It's gonna go viral. I'm gonna wake up with 100,000 subscribers. And it's nothing like that. I remember posting it and sitting there and refreshing the page and I was like, zero views, refresh. Zero views, refresh. Zero views and like, when you're first starting a channel, it's very common to have a video sit on zero views for like hours. And even just like the first 100 subscribers, I can't remember how long it took me, but it took me like, a couple of months at least just that's posting consistently twice a week just to get 100 subscribers by the way i'm gonna go in with my la girl slate why do i always want to call it the slady shim this shady slim brow pencil and i wish i liked this more than i do you guys i wanted to love it and i think the main reason i don't love it so much is because the color is just very off and whenever i use it my brows are so warm but I feel like the product is a little fragile and a little crumbly. And I've had like pieces fall off on me before. And, but I think the main reason I don't like it is just cause the color is way too warm for my eyebrows. And it's funny to think back because in general, I just thought everything about YouTube would be so much easier than it is. And I think most people think that when they watch videos, you don't realize how much goes in behind the scenes. Like I would hear YouTubers complain about different things and I would just roll my eyes like, dude, it's not that hard. You're just sitting down and you're filming a video and then you're posting it on the internet. It's like a 15 minute video. What, what is so hard about it? But once I started my own channel, I realized that a 15 minute video takes a whole day to produce between like first of all the video prep of what you're going to film researching the video like planning out your content but also just the actual setup of like getting ready doing your hair doing your makeup setting up the camera or like before i had autofocus just setting the camera into focus was like a 15 20 minute task and then like a 15 minute video it takes way longer than 15 minutes to film and it varies for everyone because we all have different like filming and editing styles. So some people will do just like a one take video or they'll have very minimal like cuts in their video. But if you're watching like, let me give you an example, like a lookbook, you could watch a five minute lookbook that could take like a week to produce. Like going to all the different spots, like keep in mind, I don't film lookbooks. So I'm not the best person to explain this, but the more that I understand about the behind the scenes, like the more respect that I have for creators. And I've just learned that growing a channel is a lot of hard work. And it gives me a lot more respect for the bigger creators out there. Because don't get me wrong, there are definitely some people out there that get kind of lucky. Sometimes it just works like that and someone's content is just kind of randomly promoted. But for the most part, there's so much behind the scenes that goes into it. Like if someone is very successful on YouTube, it's because they worked their butt off. Like, it is not easy. But for my eye look today, I wanted to use the ColourPop Yes Please palette because this is in my Shop My Stash and I've had a lot of requests to do a look with this. 
And the reason I wanted to throw this in my shot mustache was because I've had a vision to do like a yellow eye look with a red lip. I saw Ellie Glines do a video like this maybe a month ago at this point and ever since watching it, I, I feel like had that in my mind that I've been wanting to do a look like this. So I'm gonna start with this, but if you guys don't know, red and yellow is one of my favorite color combinations. Like, it's just so ketchup and mustard and our couch in our living room is red and I've been on the hunt for a long time to find like a yellow chair to go in the living room because I just feel like those two colors pair together beautifully. So now I'm taking the yellow and patting it in all over the lid. So excited about this look. I've been, like I said, I've been wanting to do at least like a yellow smoky eye for a while now. I think yellow is such a fun color for spring and that's why I wanted to bring the Yes Please into this rotation on my shot, my stash just so I could have an excuse to wear a bunch of yellow looks. But you know, having been on YouTube for three years now, I feel so lucky to have the community that we have. And all of my subscribers are so kind and so welcoming. And I'm just so appreciative that we've created such an uplifting and happy community. And I hope that my channel is a space where you guys can kind of get away from the stress in your life and just relax and just talk about makeup and chat with a friend. I'm also gonna take a little bit and smoke it out, whatever's left on my brush under my lower lash line. And then because I feel like this is a little bit more bright yellow than I want, I want it to be more like a mustard. So this is like truly a ketchup and mustard look. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the brown shade and add that into the crease. You guys will have to let me know what type of looks you're excited to wear this spring. I feel like yellow is gonna be such a big color. I also am like looking forward to wearing some more purple looks, but like lighter, more pastel purples. I'm also gonna take a bit of that brown and pack it on the outer corner. Now I'm gonna mix together a little bit of the brown I was using with this deeper brown and definitely tap my brush off, but I'm just going to tap this over the outer corner so I can get a little bit more depth out there. And then I'm gonna go back over it with the yellow. Well, I haven't picked up any more yellow. Just the brush that I was using with the yellow so I can make sure they blend in together. I'm also gonna take an eyeliner brush and run a little bit more of that dark brown on the lash line. But if you guys have any requests for different springtime makeup looks that you wanna see, definitely leave me a comment down below, maybe which colors you're interested in, if there's any palettes you want me to use and do a look with. Let me know because I'm pretty pumped for spring. Also, let me know, kind of random, but what are you guys watching on Netflix right now? Because Derek and I recently finished the show Friends from College and we really liked that show. It's funny, we weren't going to watch it because it has like terrible reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, but we ended up watching it anyways and it was so good. They have two seasons out right now and I, I was looking up the other day, I don't think it's been like officially renewed for a third season or maybe it has. Also, I don't know if this is intentional, but we were saying that we feel like it feels like a modern day adaptation of Friends, which Friends is like one of my favorite shows of all time. And don't get me wrong, it's nothing like Friends in terms of the feel, in terms of like the plot line, but the basis of the show is like mirror image to Friends. So it's six friends that live in New York City, three male and three female, and the name is Friends from College. But the lippy that I've been so excited to pair with this look is the shade Holy Grail from Persona. Okay, now that I see the lip and eye together, it's not quite as mustardy as I want. So I'm gonna go in one more time, mixing both of these together on my brush, and then pat that over the lid. But I'm gonna go ahead and set this with my Ofra Makeup Fixer. And then tap over everything with my sponge. But this is the final look. I just wanna thank you guys so much for supporting me and supporting this channel over the past three years. Oh my gosh, three years, that's so crazy. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some yes please inspiration like you've been asking for and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.